I'm going to show you how you can turn a book into a storytelling activity in four steps. When you know fascinating ways to tell stories to children, they learn much better. I'm going to show you this by using a book called Mr. Cat's Crazy Day, written and illustrated by Sarah Colombo and Michaela Bozo. Hope I'm saying their name right. This book is great because it's funny and witty and a great resource to learn English too. The book is all about Mr. Cat that is crazy because he wakes up late, messes the house and falls asleep when he's supposed to make his homework. Step one, I read the book carefully and ask myself one simple question. What is the experience the book is trying to give the child? And from that place, I'm thinking, if this is the experience, how can I bring it into the storytelling activity? So for example, in Mr. Cat's Crazy Day, there are a lot of speech bubbles. Those speech bubbles always begin with, oh no, Mr. Cat forgot to ta 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 ta. So I'm immediately thinking, because it's something that is repeating itself again and again, it reminds me of a rhythm, a rhythm that, that comes again and again and again. So immediately I have an idea. What if every time I lift my hand up, the children will say, oh no, Mr. Cat is late. Something like this. Or what if, oh no, Mr. Cat is late again. Oh no. So step one is how can I bring the experience a child has when he reads the book to the storytelling activity? Step two, I decide how I want to demonstrate and show this book. Will I use glove puppets? Will I use cards with pictures? Different kinds of puppets and props. For example, I decided that I'm going to tell this story twice. The first time I will use different props like a puppet doll and a, a clock and even something to splash water when he splashes and makes a bath. Remember, a prop can also be sound effect, like this. The second time, I will use clock and cards with picture from the book, and the children will have to organize the pictures according to the story. Because the story happens during one day and Mr. Cat falls asleep, then I can fall asleep. And suddenly wake up. Uh, maybe I wake up from their ringing, the children's ringing, or sound effect, or just like I did now. Step number three is a compelling beginning. I want the children to listen to the story, not because they have to, but because they want to. So this is my decision. If Mr. Cat's crazy day is so crazy, maybe I can start the lesson really crazy. Hello. Hello, class. What are you looking at? What's wrong? I know, it's weird to start a lesson like this. It's really funny and you have to have a bit of guts, right? But will your students laugh? Will your students want to hear the story? And you can even make it even more compelling by saying, you know, I acted just now crazy, but do you want to see how crazy Mr. Cat is? Will they say yes? Of course they will. They will laugh, they will be amused, and they will want to hear what you have to say. Step number four is planning the ending of your activity. So I like to recap everything that happened. Say goodbye to all the props, but you can say it in a very interesting way. For example, you can bring each child one of the props you used in the storytelling activity and ask them to bring it back, put it in the bag, but on the correct order. Another example is just taking the physical book and showing the children the illustrations and just summarizing a bit what happened in the book. So the children connect between the storytelling activity to a physical book. If you like this way of storytelling and you want another example, I want to invite you to a video tutorial where I take another book and turn it into a fascinating storytelling activities where I really show you special props I use. So all you have to do is open the link that I will share and take it. Please uh, comment, like, share this video with anyone who you think this might interest you.